So there are some big changes in the mortgage world happening. CMHC just made a huge announcement and we want to get you the goods. Meanwhile, we were chatting with a good friend of ours, Manny Leishman, who happens to be in that world. So we're going to shoot an episode of Prime People right now with Manny Leishman from the Modern Mortgage Company and she's going to give you the goods. Let's go see what she has to say. So the audience has a little bit of a background on you because I was just speaking about you in the vehicle as we were pulling up here. I spoke to how, you know, we specialize in real estate. You know, we think we're at the top of our field in terms of what we do. We yeah. sharpen that sort of daily, but CMHC just announced a plan and there's a whole bunch of talk about it in the industry. And I think there's a lot of misinformation going around out there. And we were talking about a mutual client that you were kind enough to refer to us. So we were like, why don't we just do an episode of Prime People, introduce you to Mandy Leishman from the Modern Mortgage Company, um, and she can provide some clarity. Now, is CMHC just handing out free money or like what's actually happening that people are talking about? Yeah, no, that's a great question, Justin, because, you know, word on the street right now is everyone thinks that CMHC is just gifting first time home buyers these funds, which is absolutely incorrect. Okay. They will have shared equity in the home. So first time home buyers who number one qualify at the 5% down, that means, you know, they've got to have decent credit, um, income coming in, employment basically. Yep. CMHC will add an additional 5% to their down payment. First time home buyers, mortgage payments go down obviously because now they've got this down payment of 10%. However, it's not a gift. It has to be repaid and CMHC has shared equity in the home in the so, property that's right okay let me let me stop you for a second because again i'm looking at this from a layman's perspective i'm yep. not in the mortgage industry yep. so maybe i'll i'll usher the audience along here so they're buying a house they have the option of putting what 5 10 15 20 100 percent finally like they can buy it all cash if they want yeah. the advantage you're saying in putting in more money is it drops the payments right so like what would do you know roughly what the difference would be they're talking right now from you know the stats that we get daily on you know the new program is about 187 dollars a month okay give or take right because each mortgage is different and there's a big asterisk there because different price points Absolutely. and different qualifications now yeah. to break that down even further for the audience they're saving 189 let's say a month but they're giving up a share of equity in the home and like one of the biggest from a real estate agent's yeah. perspective one of the biggest ways people develop wealth owning real estate is the equity gain. So Absolutely. if they give up, you know, 5% equity in a $500,000 gain, yeah. they're giving up a significant chunk of money, aren't they? It's a big chunk of money, Justin. And what you have to remember too, you guys being realtors, so the client, you know, is, they get the shared equity of the yep. 5%. You guys go and list the home. You sell it for an additional $50,000, $60,000 because yep. the market, you know, has gone up in value they are still responsible for paying the difference in that hmm. on top of their 5% of shared equity. Of, of what they've gotten. So Absolutely. again, if you're looking at this program, that's something you need to be aware of is your exit strategy. It's all well and good that they're giving you a little bit of extra money, but if we're talking, let's say 200 bucks a month that you're saving by mm -hmm. giving up the equity, I personally would say look at $200 a month that you can find in Starbucks and restaurant eating and everything else and you know tuck that away for the long term and keep your equity because why would you give up equity if you didn't have to now the other part of that conversation is maybe you're looking to get into a specific product in a specific area and there is an opportunity cost for you i'm not dissuading you from doing the program mm. i think that's what it's for right yeah. is people thinking well the market's unaffordable now how am i going to buy this property right like they, they can't well, and i think that you're absolutely correct i think a lot of you know first time home buyers who you know the struggle is real and they're yeah. out there and they're competing and you know there's bidding wars and they just don't think that they can afford to get into the home that they want so you know again it's first time home buyers right now are thinking yeah. that they've got a little bit of extra cash they can lower the mortgage amount which means they could purchase for a little bit higher mm -hmm. but they have to qualify. So they're still going to have to prove income and okay. they have to qualify in this program. So, so they have to qualify for the home value. Absolutely. At, regardless of the down payment. The down yes. payment is really just to yes. alleviate a bit of the burden yes. from month to month. So Absolutely. if they're qualified for let's say $400,000, the CMHC program doesn't really 
in, indicate whether they can afford to buy that house or not. It's just giving them a little bit more of a boost. Well, and you have to remember too, one of the you know stipulations with this program is they have to make one hundred and twenty thousand or less. Okay. So anyone you know, a first time home buyer that's coming out and they make two hundred thousand dollars combined, don't qualify. That's right. Huh. So. Lots of interesting things to think about. And if, you know, your clients move into the home and they use this, you know, program that CMHC is now offering, yep. if they don't repay that loan back or that shared equity amount that they've lent out, they have to repay it within 25 years. Okay. So again, let me put on my devil's advocate hat again. Yep. And let's go the other way. Yep. The market crashes, it yep. becomes bedlam. And I mean, cycles happen, right? Yeah. I My concern is CMHC lending out that much money and all of a sudden they take a loss. How does that work? Like, are they gonna be protected? Is CMHC will bite the bullet on that one, right? Yeah. They have to, but that being said, if the market and what they're predicting with the market, again, yeah. I'm not an agent, Justin, sure. you know that, but you know, they still are predicting a very strong market for the next 10 years. So uh, I can't read the future. It's a, And that's the same <laughs> on both sides of things, right? Yeah. Real estate agent mortgages aside, like as professionals, we're here to guide you mm -hmm. and we're in our respective professions working day to day, hence why I'm talking to Mandy about this and I'm not speaking on mortgages. You know, I think as a team, you have to understand that you can't just put the onus on somebody else. Yeah. You gotta really look at your current situation and work with a professional team to see, do you really need that house? Mm -hmm. Our product offerings changing. Yeah. There's buyers that we're working with that I'm advising, buy townhouses, buy condos, yeah because that product in London's now becoming competitive, Absolutely. but it hasn't for a very long time. And there's big equity gains to be gained in that. Yeah. Once everybody moves from single family to townhomes and condos, yeah. and it becomes normal, like Kitchener, Waterloo, Toronto. Yeah. That's just the standard that they have there. Yeah. And I guess, you know, what I, my advice to, you know, the audience and anyone out there, you know, curious about this, because I've even seen, you know, some of my clients put the brakes on that have been pre-approved for months and months. They've been out there shopping. They're, you know, adamant that they're going to wait to the fall, right? Once yep. the program starts. I think just reaching out to a mortgage agent or a broker and just really finding out the details of the program and, you know, one, if you qualify, what it entails, what it really looks like, like you said, the 187 or $200, depending on the mortgage amount, break down at the end of the course, where are you really saving the, you know, the money? If you have to give back the 5% of shared equity or 10% if it's a new build and if the value of the home goes up, which, you know, we think it will. Yep. And so Canada's got some pretty good regulations um, in place from a financial yeah. perspective. They've been talking about the market dropping for years, mm -hmm. but you know, I know from the financing side of things, they did some things to make sure that people weren't spending more than they should be. Yeah. And that market supply and demand is always going to win at the end of the day. There's only so many houses on the market, yeah. and only so many buyers. And it'll go back and forth. Even in the last 60 days, we've seen a shift where there's a lot more inventory and a lot yeah. more buyers, but it's almost more balanced where February and April and May, there was not much inventory and a lot of buyers. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised if now coming fall, knowing yeah. this, if there's going to be a huge amount of buyers going into this saying, oh my gosh, I've got all this money, not really understanding. So if you're a seller, you may want to think about that. Well, and well. that's kind of, you know, it's funny, I've talked to my husband about this. That's my prediction yeah. um, is that there will also be people that wait till after Labor Day weekend yeah. to relist or, you know, put their home on the market because there's going to be this fluctuation of first time home buyers out yeah. there you know, shopping around and wanting to utilize this program. Um, again, I, I can't comment if it's, you know, going to be beneficial or if it's not. I don't know enough information on it just yet. Yep. As the months progress and, you know, we really hit the fall and, it, you know, the program is implemented, I think we'll have a lot more details and structure. On that note, um, if they're going to go find you somewhere to get those details, yeah. where can they find you? You can always find me on my Facebook page, um, Mandy at MortgageMandy.com um, okay. or on my website, but Facebook is my preferred. You can actually message her there too. So if you yes. go into the messenger button, yeah. you literally are going to be talking to Mandy. So yeah. that's a good way to get any questions you yeah. have. Answered. I got another question. Um, yeah. CMHC, how does it work? Is it is it government backed? Is it taxpayer backed? Yeah, it's government backed. Okay. So um, ultimately, it's the taxpayers that fund it. Yeah. High level, right? Yeah. And I think that's where I brought up a concern where I'm like, I'm playing again. Worst case scenario, devil's advocate. They lend out uh, 400 billion dollars in money. Yeah. And then that money's completely gone. Yeah. It the burdens on the taxpayers, and Absolutely. that's where I'm like, I really want to know yeah. about this program. Yeah. Um, give us a couple other you know, misconceptions about more, like what's one of the most common myths you hear in the mortgage industry or conversations that you have to educate buyers on that they don't normally come in equipped to understand? Well, I mean, <coughs> just about the new program or just Anything. in general? Just in general. Let's get off the CMHC program yeah. for a second. All right. I mean, 
first of all, there's a lot of, you know, misunderstanding between mortgage agents and the branches. And funny enough, we work with most of the major branches. It's just that you interact with us. You don't pay us a fee to use our services. It's the banks and the lenders. It's just that we've got more options um, so, so, so I, let me again, let me play the case study of the yeah, audience. Sure. I'm Justin, I'm going to buy a house. Yeah. Um, I've had an account with TD for 15 years. Yeah. I go in one day and they tell me, oh, we can help you with that. Yeah. We'll give you the best rate because you're a TD yeah. client. Am I missing an opportunity there to potentially another lender might be able to give Absolutely. me something? Absolutely. Yeah. You're self-employed. I also you know, bank with TD. And yeah. the first thing before I got into the industry is my husband and I walked into our local branch at TD and we've got investments there and our money's there and our paychecks go into those accounts you know you're pre-approved but little did i know and actually justin it was you who yeah. referred us to a mortgage broker yeah. and we just realized there was more options and that options meaning you know maybe more aggressive rates better products business owners mm -hmm. you know yeah. you have plans and everything right that's exactly I, it you, know? I, you only do mortgages and buy houses a couple times in your lives right so well, you know, like when somebody comes to you that first conversation what does that look like uh it, you know they it's a little bit intimidating because you're asking a lot of personal information about income and debt yeah. and everything that the banks and the lenders want to find out. So it it could be a little bit overwhelming, I think. But a lot of the times, the most common question is, why do they need this? Why yeah. or why do you need this, Mandy? Why do you need a letter of employment? Why do you need my T4s? Yeah. And it's not us. It's it's the banks. It's yeah. the lenders. It's you know to prove that they have income. It's you know just trying to protect all. Well, the lenders are you know protecting themselves from making sure that any information we're submitting that it's accurate and that they can afford that mortgage right that's hence pay stubs and you know it goes back to money laundering why they want to see you know where random deposits show up in people's accounts and a lot of times clients get frustrated and especially with you because they think it's us that want to see all of this so you know what i can tell you and i've seen this happen time and time again is when people don't provide that information and documents up front and yeah. then they actually have to underwrite the deal and clear yeah. financing, yeah. deals explode and fall apart. Yeah. So if you have the perfect house under contract, you've been looking for it for four years and you didn't submit your documents on time, you think the mortgage agent is just pestering you, I promise you they're not. They just know what's coming down the pipeline and how the banks work. And if you don't get things to them in a timely manner, you could lose the house of your dreams and then you'll be really frustrated. Yeah. So that's just you know something I see on the agent side of things. Um, and you know I didn't realize, like, I, I knew the mortgage companies needed that information, but I wasn't sure at what point in the mortgage process you start gathering that information. To be honest, Justin, the way I operate my business, and you know I work with a lot of realtors in the city, and y you guys need a bit of power when you're out there you know, with your buyers. So I collect my documents up front, T4s, NOAs, whatever is required yeah. to do an actual accurate pre-approval so I could call you and say Justin they are good to purchase at this amount go ahead and put in offers mm -hmm. once the offer is accepted that's where there's a little bit of again misunderstanding because clients are like well I sent you all of this already but you need an updated you know pay stub and yeah. you need some updated bank statements because you know three months have passed before they find that home so the, it's more or less it's just a lot of you know paperwork yeah. and people get frustrated with the amount of paperwork involved um it, it is what it is you can't get around it and no. canada is the way it is yeah. for a reason um and there is a difference between getting a pre-approval and meeting manny the first time and then yes. when you're buying the house and i explain this to people all the time and they're surprised when mm -hmm. i say it that you can be pre-approved for 400 and then decline on a house that you put under contract for 270. yeah do you want to explain why yeah that's actually a beautiful point so a lot of times you see it people will walk into a branch or they'll come and see us we've done a pre-approval and four months later they're out shopping with you you call me and you say yeah we've got a deal you send me the accepted offer we have to run the credit bureau again because it's expired after the 30 days yep. And they've purchased a brand new a Corvette, or, uh, yeah, yeah some jet skis, yep. and they've refurnished their rental property or you know the property that they own with a Desjardins or Tepperman's card, and we can't service the debts anymore. Yeah. And that is a major, major thing with not even just first-time home buyers, just buyers in general. And that is one thing that I know I'm hard about this, but I will stress and reiterate and reiterate what to do with your credit once you've done the pre-approval yeah. I, and I mean I've got good friends that I'm working with right now that it's a joke where they're like so I, I can't go up shopping and I can't do this and you can't that's, you stop right wait it. until you're done yeah. you have a plan you got to execute yeah. um, the other thing that we see a lot is people especially in a, a competitive market where you're going 50,000 over asking price on the property mm. the bank wants to underwrite the property and says that's great that you paid 250 for that property or 450 we only think it's worth 400 
So we'll we'll approve you for four hundred, like we said we would. Yeah. But the asset's only worth four hundred. So if you're firm, you got to pay the difference, right? And absolutely. And you know, again, on the real estate side, you guys have to always, you know, push that fact to people because they want to go in, they find their dream home, they want to over a bid by sixty, seven, eighty thousand. Yeah. We order the appraisal, and you know, again, an appraisal is much different than a home inspection. And I have a series coming out that's going to touch okay, on cool. that, um, just to kind of bring clarity to a lot of time. Home buyers are like, "Well, I already had a home inspection. Why do it's I completely different?" That's right. But yeah. we'll touch on that sure. in a different time. But yeah, basically, if the appraisal comes in less than what they put in the offer for, the banks will not lend on that additional amount of money. So you are responsible for coming up with that difference. Um, something I always, always remind my clients of when they're out shopping and the realtor. And from an, uh, an advice standpoint as a real estate agent, I mean, we have these conversations with clients about going in competitively and mm -hmm. working with a mortgage agents that have done an X amount of due diligence. You know, sometimes going in on a deal, if they're waiving their financing condition, they are taking that risk. So you have to work with a team yeah. that's going to be able to ascertain what the value should come in at. Absolutely. Work with a team to be able to get the appraisals done. Yeah. But sometimes you get a deal where it's very short order and that's where the relationships that the mortgage agents and the lenders have with the appraisers will come into play where they can turn it around a lot quicker than if you just went to the bank, right? And Justin, that's a good point. Again, you know, that's what's really special about working with, you know, a broker versus the bank and nothing against the bank. No. I work with the banks. but. You call me and I, you know, I check out the property, I call the appraiser and I say, listen, we've got clients going in, what are these properties appraising at? And they'll, they'll throw their hands up and say, walk away from that, be careful yeah. on this one. So you, there's always a lot of inside tips as a brokerage, right? It saves time and too. And again, yeah. again, going back, like there's some banks that I've had great relationships with and had successful yeah. transaction with, but it comes down to the person that you're dealing mm -hmm. with, right? And that person's relationship yeah. with industry professionals is getting the right advice. I always say we don't work in markets where we don't offer leverage or some type of yeah. advantage and it's kind of the same thing in yeah. the lending game where you know if I see something coming from somebody that doesn't have any base here mm -hmm. I get a little bit worried from the standpoint that they may not be able to execute when the chips are up against the wall yeah. and that client needs to yeah. be taken care of. Right? Yeah exactly and it's just about educating your clients and that that's the major thing right because a lot of times people will come in and they purchased a home eight years ago ten years ago 15 years ago or they've never purchased a home and yeah. the mortgage rules just constantly are changing so there's no information that you could just put in place and have on the website that you know this is what you're going to require because chances are they're going to require additional documents but it's just educating your your people it makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. So Mandy, one more time, where can they go find you? Your Facebook page, what's the name of it? Mortgage Mandy, Whoa. nice and easy. And she's putting out a whole bunch of video series yeah. on mortgages and whatnot. So I appreciate yeah. your time as always. Thank you. Glad we did this. Yeah, thank you thank very you. much, Take Justin. Care. It's been about a month since we met the first time. Yeah. Um, one thing we talked about right after we shot that episode was you said, you know, Justin, I really want to make sure we know what this plan is, what the details are before we roll it out. So that's why we delayed releasing the video. and. A, I think if you're working with a mortgage professional or a professional in any industry, you want somebody that's gonna be ethical and speak truth when they're telling you information. So kudos mm -hmm. to Mandy for kind of pointing that out. But now I'm excited because I don't know all the details. What is the new plan and can you break it down for the audience? Yeah, for sure. So now that we have more details, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable about releasing information. So I wanna make a couple things clear, Justin. It is not it's not a gift. So the government has come up with a program for first time home buyers. You have to be a first time home buyer. So okay. unless you, if you've purchased another home, you do not qualify. So what the government is doing is they are giving shared stakes um, in your property. So you are a first time home buyer. You're going to purchase your home. You come in to see a mortgage agent. You have to qualify. Qualifying meaning you have to have credit. Yep. And your combined household income of you and your wife have to be has to be under one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. You have to have saved the five percent in your bank, and then the government will match that five percent. Okay. On existing properties. Now, if you and your wife decide to buy a new build, they will add an additional five percent to that. That being said, hmm. I just want you know the public to really understand that this is not gifted money you do have to pay it back. Okay. Um, and that, that's where a lot of confusion is coming into factor here. So what's the payment looking like, right? So if you don't move, you have 25 years to pay that back at market value of what your home goes up to. Okay. That being said, you know, if your home were to depreciate, which the chances of it depreciating? Pretty minimal. 
you think, right? Yeah. You're you're a professional. I, and just over time, right? Like we did that post this morning yeah. about real estate if on a macro level. Right. And if you look at 15, 20 year windows, it's always trending up, right? right. There'll always be micro recessions, but if you look at it over a 25 year period, chances are it is gonna go up. Well, and let's be honest, most people, most first time home buyers buy their first home and they don't stay in it for 25 years. They're on the move and these are legit facts that, facts that we get daily. Yeah. In two years, they're selling. So in two years time, their home goes up by 20%. They have to pay interest on that additional 20% that the market has increased. Dis- exactly. Hmm. So it is just shared equity from the government in your home to try and decrease payment so that you can qualify for a little bit more. Okay. Does that make sense? It, it makes sense. And I guess you can look at it two ways, right? Like, and again, if I was a consumer looking at it, you are sacrificing the biggest way of making money in real estate and yeah. that's your equity growth, right? Like when I, you see people that become wealthy, you know, they usually have a pile of assets or one asset right. or two assets. And it goes up, you know, let's say the market in London went up 9.6% last year. Mm-hmm. Let's just say for easy math, it went up, you know, 20%. Right. Like it has since 2017, almost year yep. on year. You're giving up a big chunk of that to the government, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because first time home buyers, they've never owned a home. So they don't really understand how much equity they can potentially have in their home when they go to sell it. So mm-hmm. I put myself back years ago when, you know, my husband and I bought our first home. And if someone would have said, someone's going to give you 5% additional to lower your payments. I'd be like, sure. Perfect. I want to save the three or $400 and I I don't care about when I move, I'll pay it back then. Right. Mm -hmm. But I also have a lot of people that refuse to use this program. Um, and also just, I want to bring up one other thing too, and I left you some information for you and the team, but the deal has to be insured. So they can't put down 20%, even if they have 15% and hope that you know, the government will contribute an additional 5%. It has to be an insured deal. Either way. So they're going to be paying mortgage insurance. Absolutely. So, so if you put down enough to not need mortgage insurance, technically the cost savings are there for you anyways, by not yeah. having the same insurance yeah, on it. Right. Exactly. Oh. So, th- I mean, there's still a lot of, you know, irony note. It just launched last week. Yeah. Um, so, you know, combined household income of $120,000, you have to have your 5% saved on your own decent credit yeah. um, so you know qualifying for the mortgage um, but it has to be repaid and I personally wouldn't want to repay anything and I mean that's from somebody that's seen real estate transactions happen equity is something that you really have to think yeah. about and I think you know we're not saying that this is a bad thing we're not saying that it's a great thing mm-hmm. I think it's how it falls somewhere in the middle and I think the whole purpose of this video is so that you educate yourself on the decision mm-hmm. that you're making because if you're just looking at monthly payments and you're trying to get that down as low as possible mm-hmm. and you have a plan based off that, that's great. That's why they put the program in place. And I know there's some people in other markets that are thrilled about it Absolutely. because you can't buy in hyper competitive markets. You can't go yeah. qualified for a mortgage. So I think it is going to, it's going to boost the home purchasing economy. It's going to get people into homes where they couldn't get into homes before. But I think what Mandy's really trying to stress is something that I think is very important when you're making a decision, buying such a large asset Mm -hmm. is educate yourself on the good and the bad because the grass is not always green. Right. And you know, I think personally, and this is just my thoughts, I think that new builds will have a lot of first because typically a new build it's, you know, maybe second time, third time home buyers because they're a little bit more expensive, but I think you'll start to see, for you guys, yeah. a lot of first time home buyers coming in now because they're gonna get an additional 5%, right? And they get to live in something beautiful if they qualify. That being said, I mean, there is, they can't go and purchase an $800,000 home as their first one. We have to do the math of what their income is yeah. and still qualify them. So if so, you're doing math, sorry, just to cut you off for a second, yeah. you're doing math on somebody with 120K income, Yeah. what's that typically gonna qualify them? Or is that just based on their income? Yeah, or? so 120,000, maybe, 400, 500, it depends okay. on their debts too, right? It's so tough to say, cause I could say, well, this combined income makes 120,000, they're debt free, they're gonna qualify for 550. Okay. It, it's really complicated without having for sure. the application and kind of looking at the ratios, right? And that's that's the right answer. I was just yeah. kind of putting you on the spot yeah. because we were talking average price points today in one of our market updates. Yeah. Um, and we were saying, you know, you can't really buy a new home in London for less than 500 nowadays. Yeah. Go to certain spots, but you can in other tertiary markets in and around London. So. It does work depending on what product, but I think you need a, a good team to kind of help guide yeah. you so that you're not just signing on the dotted line yeah. and then you regret it five years later, right? Well, and that's, you know, again, I think the, the biggest thing that we all want to keep in mind is just speaking about whether or not you need to utilize this program. Yep. I, I have first time home buyers that do not need it. And I mean, they could take it and take advantage of saving $300 a month, but 
are you really going to put that money aside for yeah. the next two to 25 years and pay back the government? And if you are, then utilize it, right? But again, my personal opinion is I wouldn't be. And, you know, when I'm talking to people getting into the market, I tell them, you know, yeah. it's a forced piggy bank. So yeah. having, you know, money going into equity and a property yeah. over time, you kind of forget about it. Yeah. Some of the most successful people I know mm -hmm. bought student rentals and were not necessarily the most business savvy people. Yeah. Literally became millionaires because yeah. after 15 or 20 years, they had all these assets that were paid down by other people, right? Which, well, I mean, that's, that's a separate conversation. Yeah, but. exactly. And then just on the equity topic, Justin, is that the more equity you have, you know, I have a lot of clients who are realtors and who have, you know, extremely amount, good amounts of money in equity and they come and they refinance and then they purchase their second and their yeah. third rental. And those are the ones that are successful. But if you have shared equity with the government, you, you chances are you're not going to be able to refinance anytime soon, right? Yeah. So there's, there's just a lot to learn. And I think the best advice I could give is just sitting down and speaking with a professional and seeing if they really need to use this program. And I mean, there are going to be people that will jump at it, right? And yeah. not listen to you and they just see it one way and they don't care about the prepayment or the pre or the payment um, options. And there are people that just will not touch the program. And it can go either way, right? It could help some people yeah. and might not help some other people. Yeah. I think, you know, a lot of times when we're having discussions with the first time home buyers and we're going through qualifications, we ask them, have you seen a lender? And yeah. they're like, yep, yeah, went to my bank and you yeah. know, they told me they can lend me this much money. But I'm like, yeah, but have you talked to like a broker or yeah. somebody that does a large number of transactions? Because if I just told you this is the cheapest rate I can get, am I taking into account if you're going to sell the property, if you're going to refinance, what penalties right. look like, right? Like there's a lot more that goes into a mortgage than just rate, just like commissions with real estate agents. Mm -hmm. I told the guy last week, he called me because he was going to do two transactions and two purchases. And he said, what's the lowest rate you'll do it for? And I said, we're not that place, right? Yeah. I'm like, there's some great people out and there sometimes that- sometimes you have to break up with them. If that's not what you're trying to sell, right? Well, you know, the narrative and the, the conversation I had with him, I said, if you're just looking for the lowest commission, we're not the firm for you. Yeah. But I said, if you're looking to make the most money, that's a separate conversation, Yeah. right? So, you know, if you're just rate shopping, lenders and I think brokers. I watched your vlog on that one. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're pretty direct and yeah. you know, I think we're going to end up working together. Actually, we had a great follow up yeah. conversation with the client after the fact, but I feel like being transparent is very important right out of the gate. Um, so you're going to want to find yourself a lender or a broker that can mm -hmm. kind of walk you through that and you can ask the hard questions yeah. and then get the right answers. And you know, you're the one that ultimately make the decision, but Absolutely. you got to be well equipped to make that decision. Yeah, I agree. So Mandy, appreciate your time. Thank Where you. can they find you and uh, contact you? Mandy at mortgagemandy.com. You can contact me by my cell phone. I okay. have no problems giving that out. Um, I'm easy to find on Facebook and always happy to help. Okay. Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you, Justin. Take care.